Section 8.1, graphing f of x equals ax squared. We're moving on beyond linear functions and now talking about quadratic functions. A quadratic function is a non-linear function with a degree of 2, as indicated by the x squared. And it has a standard form equation, y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. When we involve the bx plus c, the graph gets a little bit more complicated, so today we're going to focus just on y equals ax squared. Now we mentioned that this function is nonlinear. The shape of the curve is called a parabola. And this parabola is a u-shaped graph of any quadratic function. So you can see from the diagram here that we have uh, something other than a line, although I do have a vertical line highlighted. I'll mention that in a minute and uh, I have a point highlighted here, point A, uh, but this is what we're going to be talking about. We're going to learn how to graph these and how to uh, compare the graphs of different parabolas. When we want to go and graph a certain equation, y equals ax squared, uh, one method that I can use is a table or a t-chart. And so what I'm going to do is just pick out different values for x and plug them into my equation and figure out where those points go, graph them, connect them, and see if we can form our parabola. For the first one, I want to do g of x equals 2x squared. So I have to figure out what values to choose for our x. Well, 0 is always a good choice. I'm actually going to put that right in the middle here uh, because that's actually where I think my vertex is going to be. Now I'm going to go uh, two points in either direction. So I'll put 1 and 2 because those are going to be pretty easy on the right, and I'm going to pick negative 1 and negative 2 on the left. Now I just plug in each of those into my function. Now when I plug in 0, I'm going to have 0 going in here for x, so 0 squared is 0 times 2 is 0. So I have the point 0, 0. When I plug in 1, 1 squared is 1 times 2 is 2. And when I plug in 2, 2 squared is 4, uh, times 2 is 8. Now when I plug in negative 1, uh, I'm squaring the negative 1, so I have to make sure that I square negative 1, which makes it into a positive, and then I multiply by 2, so I'm actually going to end up with 2 there. And uh, same type of thing for negative 2, when I square that it becomes a positive 4, and doubling that gives me a positive 8. Now I should expect to have some symmetry here, and I do, because I have my axis of symmetry that's going to go through my vertex. So that's a good sign. I'm going to plot all of these points now. So I'm going to start with the point 0, 0, and then do 1, 2, and then do 2, 8, and then I'm going to do the negatives, negative 1, 2, and 2, uh, next, excuse me, negative 2, 8. And now I'm just going to do my best to connect them in a smooth curve. And so it's not perfect. I'll show you what you just try to get them to connect and turn. Not too harsh. It's a little tough on this here, but you get the general idea. And you can draw the arrows to show that it's going to continue up in that direction. Let's do the same thing for h of x. Um, my suggestion for this, however, uh, I'd still use 0, but if I plug in a certain number, uh, I'm going to end up getting um, a number that has to be divided by 3, because I'm going to multiply by 1 -third. So it's actually going to be pretty beneficial if I can pick multiples of 3 here. So I'm going to choose 3 and negative 3 and uh, 6 and negative 6. I think I actually might run out of a little bit of space, but uh, we can probably get a pretty good estimate. When I plug in 0, square that, multiply by 1 third, 0. Now I'm going to plug in 3, and I get 3 squared is 9, 1 third of that is 3, and because I know how the symmetry works, when I plug in negative 3, that's going to be the case as well. And when I plug in 6, 6 squared is 36. Ooh, that's pretty big because then one third of that is 12. So 6 
12. Uh, boy, it's going to be uh, somewhere kind of way up here, and this one's going to be somewhere way up here. So I'm, I'm actually not going to graph that completely, but um, I would have 12 on either side. So maybe just those two point, uh, three points will be enough. I'm going to graph 0, 0, uh, which is uh, the x and the y. Then I'm going to graph uh, 3, 3. So there's 3, 3. And I'm going to graph negative 3, negative 3. I'll graph that. And then I'm, I'm just going to take those. I'm going to graph those together. And uh, I have a different parabola. So you see that for all of these parabolas here, they actually have the same uh, domain and range. Uh, the one that I had drawn originally is just the basic y equals x squared. Uh, but yeah, these all have the same uh, domain and range, and they have the same vertex and axis of symmetry. They increase and decrease in the same regions. Uh, it just so happens that one is wider than uh, x squared and one is more narrow. And that's, that's the only difference. But to graph these, you're best off just uh, plugging into the, uh, the t-chart and pick convenient values. You know, if your coefficient's a fraction, uh, like one-third, uh, use x values that are multiples of that number so that it gets uh, cleared up a little bit. I hope this uh, makes sense. All right, here's another opportunity to uh, plug in and uh, find some values for x in order to graph our parabolas. Uh, once again, I'm just going to start with 0 uh, in the center of each of our tables here because plugging in for 0 into these functions will give me uh, 0 for a y value each time. Now I want to think about what I want to plug in. Uh, I notice that I'm using negative 1.5 x squared and negative 1 half. Uh, those are both uh, fractions with uh, denominators of 2 and so I'm probably going to want to choose even numbers to plug in. So I'm going to go uh, 2 and 4 on the right and negative 2, negative 4 uh, on the left. And, and hopefully I can actually use these for both uh, because my denominator in each one would be 2. Negative 1.5 could be written as negative 3 over 2. So now i just uh, going to plug in. Um, so if you use a calculator, uh, you can plug in. Just make sure that anytime you square a negative, it becomes a positive, and then you multiply by the negative coefficient. So uh, go ahead and fill those in, and then I will uh, reveal the answers. All right, let's see them. All right, so there you go. Um, those are the function values when you plug in. Those are the, the y values for uh, each of the x values that we've chosen. Uh, you can see that I'm probably not going to be able to graph uh, 4, negative 24, or negative 4, negative 24, but uh, that's okay. I'll have the three points uh, from the middle that I can graph. So I'll graph that uh, function first. Uh, 0, 0 is certainly still in play. Uh, negative 2... Uh, negative 6, and same thing for 2, 6. And I, I said, again, I can't graph all the way. You know, it's way down here. Uh, so I'll just connect to what I can. And it's, uh, you know, it's a parabola. It's going to be kind of kind of narrow compared to the y equals negative x squared that's shown. And, uh, and now I will... Uh, graph the other one. We've still got 0, 0 in the mix. We've got 2, negative 2, and negative 2, negative 2. And then we have 4, uh, negative 8, and negative 4, negative 8. And then I just kind of gradually connect these five points. And it's not going to be perfect. You can't, you can't be perfect. You can just get a pretty decent sketch. And that's what we have there. So just like on the last example, uh, they have the same vertex, axis of symmetry, domain, range, and intervals where it's increasing and decreasing. Uh, the only thing that changes is if it's wider or narrower. So once again, if you're given a function, just pick values uh, for x, plug them in to the function to find values for y, and then you can plot those points and connect them in a smooth way. You don't want to make it all herky-jerky or uh, really pointed. 
nice smooth curve to form your parabola. So you've seen from all of our examples so far that these graphs of parabolas, y equals ax squared, um, have a lot in common. The only thing that changes is uh, how it opens in terms of opening up, down, narrow, or wide. And uh, here we have a whole bunch of examples compiled to see how the number a, what it is, how that, how that affects the type of curve that we have. If a is positive, uh, the parabola is going to open up like these three examples here. Here uh, we have a is a positive 0 0.25, positive 1, positive 4. Uh, all these parabolas open up. If a is negative, like these parabolas down here, uh, where our a is negative 0 0.25, negative 1, and negative 4, the parabola will open down. That's going to be true going forward. Um, and also it's the size of the a that matters. If a is a big number, as in bigger than 1, like 4, or negative 4, since we can think about its absolute value, it's going to become a narrower function than the typical x squared or the typical negative x squared. Uh, it gets narrowed because it's, it's um, being stretched out vertically. It's getting stretched out and uh, that makes it taller and narrower. Uh, meanwhile, if it's a fraction uh, between 0 and 1, if we think about its absolute value, um, then we're going to have something like 1 fourth, which is what 0.25 is, or negative 1 fourth. Uh, is going to make it a wider, um, a, a wider parabola. It's going to be kind of squished down and, uh, and pulled out, uh, made wider. So that's what the you can expect it's something that can be useful when we're comparing our answers, uh, looking at something and knowing how it should look uh, compared to a standard y equals x squared parabola. Let's just take a look at a pretty basic word problem here. Uh, there's a bridge that has an arch support that can be modeled by the function f of x equals negative 0.0012x squared. And this is the arch support here. Uh, where x and f of x are measured in feet, we want to find the height and width of the arch. Now, uh, this is really nothing more than just looking at the the graph of this um, of this function. Uh, first of all, it has the behavior that we expect: uh, vertex at zero zero, axis of symmetry, x equals zero. Um, the fact that a here is a negative number, uh, but a small number, absolute value less than one tells us this is going to, first of all, open down, being negative, which it does, and be very wide, which this certainly appears to be, uh, because it's such a small number uh, in terms of its absolute value. So it just matches our description that we had before. It increases um, when x is less than 0 and decreases when x is greater than 0. kind of covers all of our characteristics. Um, but in terms of its height and width, it's really nothing more than just uh, looking at the graph. The height uh, can be measured by figuring out exactly uh, how far down this goes. And it goes down all the way to this point here. Based on that grid, each block appears to represent 50. So we're talking about a distance here of 300, uh, which means that the height we're looking for, we have to make sure we put a proper label on it, is going to be 300 feet. That's quite a tall uh, bridge support. Uh, but it pales in comparison to its, um, to its width because uh, based on this here, we can see that the, uh, the width, the bridge, seems to go all the way out to 500. Now, because of the axis of symmetry, that's going to tell me that I've got 500 on the other side, too. And based on that, I can identify pretty easily the width of this. And uh, I know, therefore, that the width is 500 plus 500, or 1,000 feet. And so that's just a little question you can answer. Uh, and you can kind of examine it based on the nature of the uh, parabola and its function uh, expression. And uh, there you go. I hope all of this makes a lot of sense.